Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I just wanted to clue you in on a little problem that I encountered recently, just to give you a heads up in case you come across it. It's, uh, it appears to me to be a problem in the way APT has been uh, changed for probably version 3.86. I just recently installed uh, Release Candidate 3.86.9, and I found that the images it takes and displays in, as a display in Pix Insight are flipped relative to what I used to get for version 3.84. And here I'm showing you a stretched, highly stretched example of, of a flat frame, two flat frames. And of course, this is a potential problem if your light frames are not flipped and your flat frames are flipped, which is the problem I encountered. I notified the APT forum once I figured out what was going on. And for any of you who have dealt with the APT forum, you know that they respond darn near instantly. And in this case, Jim, I'm sorry, Jim, I don't know your last name, but his screen name is JST200. And anybody who uh, listening to this who's been on the APT forum has seen Jim responding to many questions that come up. And I certainly appreciate his very quick response. We had a real time conversation about this when I noticed it. I sent in a question and I got an answer back almost immediately. And uh, you can't ask for a better response than that. And what Jim did was point me to a, a comment from a different user and the corresponding solution. So I'm going to walk you through that solution and a couple of other things to think about, both from our perspective as users, but also from APT's perspective, as it appeared that conversation, as was being talked about in the APT forum, was that Pix Insight might need to be changed rather than APT, and I don't believe that's the case. Let's go over to Pix Insight and take a look at the results. So I was out imaging the uh, Sol Nebula and a little bit of the California Nebula the other night. Collected oh a little over maybe close to eight hours of, uh, of data on the Sol Nebula, and about two a little over two and a half hours on each filter, and I calibrated the the oxygen three, the sulfur two, and the HA data. And here's my calibrated result for the stack result for the oxygen data. As you can see, uh, anybody who's been in astrophotography more, for more than about five minutes knows that this isn't what we're going after. Uh, I clearly have uh, off-axis guider shadows on the corners. And by the way, I'm taking data on both sides of the meridian, so there's going to be a, a flip. And then I'm overcompensating on the other two ends. So this is uh, obviously unusable. I went back and looked at uh, a single sub to see if these sorts of characteristics were evident in a single sub of the oxygen data. And no, uh, here's what I expect. I expect to see the shadow zone of my off-axis guider and basically nothing else. And of course, when we pass the meridian and this image flips, the shadow is going to appear to be on the on the other side. But uh, this is about what I expected. So then I went back and looked at the flat frame that I was using to calibrate it. And this is where I noticed that we had a, had a little bit of a problem. I've got the off-axis guider shadow taken with Nina uh, up here in the upper right. And I have the shadow zone of the off-axis guider taken with APT version 3.86.9 in the lower right. And of course, when you try to calibrate this image with this flat, you're going to end up overcompensating in an area that doesn't need compensation. You're not going to compensate in an area that does require compensation. And then when you have the meridian flip tossed onto that, you're going to have overcompensation in these two opposite corners and no compensation in these two corners. And guess what? That's what you end up with. So it was pretty obvious that that was the issue. But then we needed to, to track down why that was the issue. And I went back to version 3.8, a flat frame taken with version 3.84 of APT and sure enough the out the shadow zone of the off-axis guider which has not moved relative to the camera during this whole period here uh, is in the upper right where it should be now the, the the what's causing this is a keyword in the fits header uh, that is is being put in and how Pix Insight is interpreting that keyword for example if we come over here to this file this is the Nina fly, uh, light frame, and we bring up the fits header tool. We can examine what's in, going on in here. We have the check mark here, so it's following this image that we had highlighted. And if we scroll down, we can see that the software taking this picture is Nina 1.10.1.90. And this is the key term here, the row order. The row order keyword is listed as top-down 
for a Nina generated FITS file. Now, if I go over to the three version 3.84, you can see we have astrophotography tool 3.84 talking about this flat frame from earlier, back when I was using 3.84. And if you look through here, there is no row order keyword. So in 3.84, they were not, APT was not specifying the, the row order keyword in the FITS file, leaving it to PIX Insight to resort to a default, which apparently is top down. So in other words, APT is, is correctly inputting the data into their FITS file in a top down order so that when PIX Insight cannot find the row order keyword, it simply resorts to its default, which is top down, and as a result, it displays this image correctly. The fix, according to Jim, is to go over to the Format Explorer and Pix Insight, and I consider this a temporary fix until they sort things out, uh, and highlight the fits file, and then come down to the Edit Preferences, and this is the guy here, Use Row Order Keywords. If, when I was having this problem, the keyword here was checked, and so the solution, temporary solution, is to untick that and then say OK. And now, whenever you display a file, for example, I'll go to a flat frame. This is a flat frame taken with version 3.86, so astrophotography tool 3.86.9, and as you can see now, the row order is bottom up, which I believe to be incorrect. Okay, I believe they should be writing in here top down. So right now they've added this row order and I simply believe they need to just change bottom up from to top down. Pix Insight should not change on their end, otherwise they're going to screw up the files generated, for example, by Nina and perhaps other imaging software. So there needs to be a, a collective meeting of the minds here to understand what the format means of what top down and what bottom up means because right now it is not being interpreted correctly on APT's part. They need to change this to a top down and I believe everything would work just fine after that. Once I implemented that change and used a, cal a flat with the off-axis guider in the correct location, I was able to successfully go from this stacked image to this stacked image. And as you can see, the off-axis guider shadows are being fairly correctly uh, corrected for. There is, if you note here, a tilt, a, a rotation. That's field rotation. In this case, I'm taking pictures of an image uh, from basically all night long, starting at first dark and then all the way proceeding till morning, uh, with a detour to the California Nebula in between. But my mount has been outside for a fairly long period of time, probably longer than I've ever had it out there, and I've only polar aligned it when I first put it out there. So what you're seeing here is error in polar alignment uh, that's accumulating or becomes more visible, only visible, when you image that same target over a span of, of uh, eight hours or so. Now, so the next time I go out, hopefully tonight, I will be I will do another polar alignment and get things set back up to take that field rotation out. But with these properly calibrated frames, the oxygen three, the sulfur, and the hydrogen alpha, I was able to to get a pretty decent picture of the Sol Nebula. Quite impressed with it. This is uh, one of the first pictures I'm showing here from the GT81. Although I've got data from three other targets, I need to process. I also managed to collect about two hours of data on the California Nebula. So tonight I'm going to reverse the process. I may pick up a couple of extra hours on the Sol Nebula and then spend the rest of the what will I hope be a clear night collecting data on all three filters for the California Nebula. Okay guys, well that's all I had for you for uh, this video. It's not a problem that you're probably going to encounter if you take your light frames and your flat frames with the same imaging software. In my case, I like to use the CCD flats tool in APT because it allows me to adjust the exposure time ever so slightly to match the library of dark flats that I have. Whereas the flats wizard in Nina blitzes through the images so that you don't have an opportunity to adjust the exposure time for each of the filters. So here's the Sol Nebula after one nights of imaging and I'll leave you with that.